Welcome to lesson G, Intro to Complex Numbers. Have you uh, ever wanted to take the square root of a negative number? People have wanted to do that for a long time, like a couple thousand years probably. People have been trying to take the square root of a negative number. Well, it wasn't until about 500 years ago that they finally figured out a way to do it. They finally figured out a way to take a square root of a negative number. This is like new math. It's only 500 years old. That's nothing. It's, um... I guess it's older than decimals. I think decimals are in the 1600s. But anyway, it's a fairly recent invention. Um, now, the thing is, you're going to have to invent an entirely new kind of number in order to do it. But if you don't mind that so much, uh, we can do it. So, how is this going to work? Well, let's start over here with this. This is something we know and love. Radical 16, we've seen that before. So that radical symbol, again, means the principal square root and remember what principle means is kind of like the main square root or practically speaking the positive square root. So 16 has two square roots, right? Plus four and minus four, both square to 16. But the principal root of that is just the positive four, okay? Just the positive four. Now, how would you do this? Well, I just want to show you uh, right away, this is what you do. Here, how do you like that? So the square root of 16, is 4. We knew that, right? Or the principal square root of 16 is 4. Um, and if you had a negative inside, well, what you do is you just put an i there. Okay? We'll explain what i is a little bit later. First, that's just what you do. You put an i there. You just put the i there. And that's how you take the square root of a negative. Coming over to this one. Hey, I want to take the square root of a negative 18. Well, fine. Just put an i there. Put an I in front. Now the 18 is not negative anymore. So, like I say, practically speaking, it's the quickest thing in the world. You just put an I in front. So, radical 18. Now, really, let's let's be good. We really should, uh, you know, reduce this thing. Can you s sniff out a perfect square in there? A 9 comes to mind. You can squiff, squiff out. You can sniff out a 9 in that 18. So, the, the reason you do that is because you can take the square root of 9. It allows you to simplify to some extent. So you're, this is going to be a 3, and then you've got the 2 still left inside the square root. Now, what we're going to write for our answer, we have the i, we have the 3, we have the square root of 2. Write it this way. 3i square roots of 2. Please go in that order. I'm going to make that a special thing. In that order. Strictly speaking, it's not wrong if you if you mix these things up. I mean, it is a multiplication problem, so strictly speaking, these are all kind of equivalent, I guess. But uh, this is the one that looks the best, right? This one is. That one certainly looks the best. Uh, you'd like to put the square root last. And the reason we put the square root last is because a lot of times when people are writing it this way, Here's what happens. It's like, wait, did you want the i to be inside the square root radical thing? I don't hope not. And so if you write it this way, it's a little, just a little dangerous that your pen's going to slip a little or something. This is unambiguous. This you know for sure. The i, the i is out of the radical. Pull it out to the front. And by the way, i3 looks goofy. 3i doesn't look goofy. So write the 3i and then the radical 2. Can I get you to do that? I didn't want to erase it. I wanted to highlight it. Come on, guys. Let's highlight it. Come on, guys. Highlight. There we go. Would you highlight? Okay. <sighs> Got it. So please write your answers like that in that order. Okay. So it almost makes it seem like there's not much to do today, right? You want to take the square root of negative? Put an I in front. Okay? Just put the I in front. Now, as long as we're on this little page here, let's uh, take a look at these kinds of equations. Because th that's where the motivation comes from, ultimately, is we're trying to solve equations. That's where squares and negatives come up. You know, it's not like we just walk around saying, I want to take the square root of a negative today. It shows up when you're trying to solve equations and stuff. So anyway, here's an equation, x squared equals 16. And we've seen this kind of equation before. So you say, oh, something times itself. Something times itself is 16. It's like, oh, I know how to solve that. I take the plus or minus radical 16. 
because again, the radical 16 the, is, just means the principal root, which is the positive root. So you have to make sure that you put the plus or minus in front because what you're really doing in this particular problem is you're trying to find all the solutions, which means all the square roots, which means both square roots. So put the plus or minus there. Both plus 4 and minus 4 will solve this equation. If you plug a negative 4 in and square it, you get a 16. The equation's going to work, right? Right. So you need both solutions, right? So keep that distinction in mind. Um, this radical is, when you see this expression, the answer to that is just 4. You do not say plus or minus 4. It's just 4. If you want both square roots, if you mean plus or minus radical 16, you have to put the plus or minus there yourself. So if you don't see the plus or minus there, don't assume that it's a plus or minus, I guess is part of what I'm saying. Anywho, looking at this one, hey, x is squared. Something times itself is going to be negative 16. And so you say, okay, x must be plus or minus radical negative 16. And we saw up here how you handle a radical of a negative. You just put an I on your answer, basically. And so we're getting here x equals plus or minus 4, and don't forget your I. But it's plus or minus 4I, because it turns out that negative 16 has two uh, excuse me, it has a principal root of 4i, but it has two square roots, both plus 4i and minus 4i both come out to 16, and I will be showing you this for sure when we get down to here. And then this one here, x squared equals negative 18, what are we going to do? Well, something times itself is negative 18, so again, plus or minus this. Now, the fact that I'm taking the square root of a negative means just put an i in front. And, of course, you're gonna, it's going to reduce the same way as it did up here, right? We had the 9 times the 2 gave us a 3 radical 2. Anyway, plus or minus 3i radical 2, right? That's how you would write your answers or your solutions to that problem. Okay, so now that I've kind of shown you the, the, the fast, what do you do, you put an i on it. You want to take a square root of a negative? Fine, put an i on it. There, everybody's happy. What's going on? What is this i? Well, this i is actually a new number. It was an invented number. And the way the number is invented is like this. i is the number that when you square it, it comes out to negative 1. Okay? i is a number that when you square it, you get negative 1. Now notice if you wanted to solve that equation, you'd say, oh, I guess I must have to do plus or minus the square root of negative 1. Okay? So some people like to say, well, i is the same as the square root of negative 1, but eh, not quite, because you'd have to put a plus or minus here if you were solving that equation. It's uh, a little safer to, oops, it's a little safer to not erase. It's a little safer to say it this way. i is the number that when you square it, you get negative 1. Okay? Now, if you try to think think about that you're gonna have a hard time it's like what do you mean if I multiply if I multiply 1 times 1 that's 1 that's not that's not giving me negative 1 what if I multiplied negative 1 times negative 1 well that's 1 so how in the world am I supposed to multiply two numbers together and get negative 1 well I don't know you have to invent a new number <laughs> you have to invent a new number and just call it I I is the number that when you square it you get negative 1 Mathematicians get to do this. They get to make their own little definitions. So it's this is just a definition, really. By definition, i is the number that when you square it, you get negative 1. You just have to go with it. By the way, it's no accident that people are calling it imaginary number. Unit means number 1. It's, it's the imaginary number uh, because people were like, that's crazy. That's not a real number. You're, you're making things up. That's an imaginary number. Okay, so at first they had a hard time being accepted, but uh, the name stuck. They're accepted for sure, but the name stuck. Anyway, i squared is negative 1. Now, how does that help us with this kind of thing? It helps us take a square root of a negative in this way. You think of the 16 as a 16, you think of the negative here as a negative 1, which is i squared. Get it? i squared is negative 1. And so 16i squared actually is negative 16. It's another way of writing negative 16. And if your eyeballs are looking at this, you're not going to have any problem saying, oh yeah, 4i. 
it is what it is that's 4i so again the shortcut is you got a square root of a negative 16 cool take the square root of 16 and put an i on it you get 4i Okay, so that, that's how and why it works. Again, it's an invention, and I've had students fight with me all term long before saying, I don't want to do that. That doesn't make any sense. It's like, I died, died, but I don't know what to tell you. It's a definition. It's a definition. And it just happens that comp, uh, imaginary numbers, imaginary numbers like this with the eyes, um, they get they find applications in all kinds of places. The flow over an airplane wing, you can analyze it with, with these imaginary things. Uh, electronic circuits you can analyze. I've seen people use this for, well, quantum mechanics. They use it for the atom and all this stuff. So they're somehow they're real. Somehow they're real. They recall them imaginary, but somehow they're real. Anyway, that's basically one of our objectives for today is to say, hey, there's this new kind of a weird number, guys. It's called I. Think of it as when you square it, you get negative one. What do we use it for? We use it primarily to be able to take the square roots of negatives, or at least to be able to write answers for the square root of a negative number. So square root of negative 16, just think of it as a 4i. Okay, Principal square root of negative 16 is 4i, and so on. Now we're going to start playing around with this i some more, doing some arithmetic and stuff uh, so that we can swing it around so that when it shows up in our uh, equations that we're solving, when these i's show up, we can monkey around with them and and have a good time. So we need to show you how exponents work. When you put an exponent on the number i, what happens? Okay, well first there's i to the one power and that color is a little bright for me. Let's get something a little less bright. So this is like i to the one. So i to the one power is just i. <laughs> it is what it is, it's i. Now i squared, we were just saying right there that i squared is negative one. So in fact, maybe this would be neater if I didn't write all this extra stuff down here, but I just kind of said i. i squared is the same as negative 1. Okay, i squared is the same as negative 1. And what this means is if you ever have a formula or an equation or an expression or something and you've got an i squared showing up in it, like maybe you have 3 i squared showing up in your equation, you're immediately going to say, no, 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 i squared is negative 1. 3 times i squared is just a negative 3. In other words, you're never going to carry i with a power on it around for very long. If i has a power on it, you're going to try to get the power off of it. So i squared, it's easy to get the power off it. i squared, again, is negative 1. Okay. Well, how am I going to get the power off of an i cubed? Well, the trick to this one is to think of the i cubed as an i squared multiplying an i. Right? i squared times i to the 1 would be i cubed. That works. So that's helpful because you know that this part is a negative 1. So you've got a negative 1 times an i. In other words, you get negative i. i cubed is the same as negative i. Isn't that something? So I said we're going to get the powers off, but I guess we're okay with a power of 1. It's just we're going to get any, any higher exponents. We're never going to have i squared, i cubed, i to the 4th or anything like that in our equations. We might have i, but we're not going to have i to any power other than i to the 1. So dig this pattern. i, negative 1, negative i. Now this, it turns out, is going to be really nice because i to the 4th. Let's do that standard trick where we think of it as i squared times i squared. The trick being I'm breaking up i to the 4th in a way. i squared times i squared would be i to the 4th. You'd add your exponents, right? And uh, Taking the i squareds out, well, now I can say, well, that i squared is just a negative 1, and that i squared is just a negative 1. So guess what you get? Negative 1 times negative 1 is you just get 1. So I'm going to erase that. But dig these results. i, negative 1, negative i, 1. <laughs> now what's going to happen is we're going to keep repeating that pattern. i, Negative 1, negative i, 1. What? Watch. See i to the 5th? Well, you can think of it as i to the 4th times i. Why do I like i to the 4th? Because I know over here that i to the 4th is just a 1. i to the 4th is just a 1. In fact, let me uh, let me get rid of some of this green. We're not going to want too much green around here for too long. 
Okay, so i to the fourth is just a one. And so this is one times i. So guess what? i to the fifth is the same thing as i. That's what I meant when I said we're going to start going around in circles now. See, I got an i. Here I got an i. Cool. What's i to the sixth? i to the sixth. Well, you know that every i to the fourth is just a one. So take out an i to the fourth. So i to the sixth is the same as i to the fourth times i squared because four times, excuse me, four plus two is six. Okay, that cool. That cool. That cool. And then, the, the, again, the i to the fourth is just a one. That's what we like about i to the fourth. It's just a one. And we actually like i squared pretty well, too, because i squared is just negative one. So I've got a one times a negative one. Well, that's a negative one. <laughs> just like we got up here for i squared. i to the sixth is also a negative one. Kind of nifty when you think about it, ain't it? All right, let's get this out of the way. I don't like my paper to be too cluttered. i to the seventh. What's that going to be? Well, again, every time you have i to the fourth, you should really kind of break it out. i to the fourth. So this would be i to the fourth times i cubed. Now, if you want, you can look up here and say, well, wait, i cubed is negative i. I, I figured that out from before. And i to the fourth is just 1, right? Every i to the fourth is just 1. So this is 1 times i cubed. But again, i cubed is negative i. We figured that one out already. So this is just negative i again. The cycle, it keeps a going. It keeps a going. I don't like the way I boxed that. Let's box it a little better. There we go. I don't like the way I boxed that. Come on, you. I'll box that a little bit differently. There. You've got to have your boxes good. Anyway, and then we've got i to the eighth here. Now, what's that going to be? Well, again, every time you have i to the fourth, it's just a one. So it's really nice to take out as many i to the fourth as you can. And actually, I can get two of them because i to the fourth times i to the fourth you would add your exponents to get eight i to the fourth is just one i to the fourth here is just one one times one is just one and so there we are at one again so dig on the pattern man it's it's a cycle it really is a nice cycle so i go i negative one negative i one i negative 1, negative i, 1. And you could keep going like this. i to the, let's see, I'm up to 8, right? So i to the, after 8 is 9 usually. Jeepers. i to the 9, i to the 10, i to the 11, i to the 12. Guess what? It's going to be equal to i, it's going to be equal to negative 1, it's going to be equal to negative i, it's going to be equal to 1. And you could prove some of this stuff to you because, to yourself, because i to the 12th, means i to the fourth times i to the fourth times i to the fourth, right? You break off as many i to the fourths as you can, again, because every i to the fourth is just a one. So if I break off i to the fourth, i to the fourth, i to the fourth, it's one times one times one, which is one. It's one. i to any multiple of four is a one. That's worth writing down, for goodness sakes. I'm going to write that down. Notice. I'll write it right across the middle. i to any power of four not any power of four, any multiple, to a power which is any multiple of four. That's what I meant to say. So you could have i to the fourth, i to the eighth, i to the twelfth, i to the sixteenth, i to the twenty, and so on. Those always come out to just one. Woohoo! And remember also that i, squ I squared is negative one. If you remember those two facts, you're going to be able to reduce any exponent, no matter how big it is. Like i to the 18th, you might be thinking, oh man, I don't want to go all the way up to 18. But actually, you don't have to really go all the way up to 18. or Well, you do, but you can take giant strides to get there. You say, look, uh, what's the closest multiple of 4? Kind of like when we were simplifying fourth roots. Remember, we'd count by 4s. Closest multiplying. No. Closest multiple of 4. I need a bigger iPad. That's all there is to it. The closest multiple of 4. Well, 4, 8, 12, 16 would be 16. So if I break off i to the 16, since I have an 18, it would have to be times i squared, right? i to the 16 times i to the 2. You add your exponents, you get i to the 18. That works. So what is this then? Well, i to the 16th is going to be 1 because of what we were saying here. Come on, you. If the exponent is any multiple of 4, 
any multiple of 4, you're just going to get 1. Okay. Anytime the exponent is a multiple of 4, it simplifies to just 1. So this equals 1. In fact, let me just do this. That equals 1. And then remember that i squared is negative 1. That was the whole definition of the imaginary unit, right? i squared is negative 1. And so I've got 1 times negative 1, which means this is negative 1. Let's kind of move this a little bit so it's not in our waist so much. Come on, you. I need a bigger iPad. I need one. What the heck? Stay pinched. Okay, here we go. Good. So, what did I just say? Oh, it's negative 1. Cool i to the 18th is negative 1. Hey, you want to try that one real quick? i to the 58th. 58th? Yep, 58th. See what you get. Well, I want to break off the closest multiple of 4. So let's see. 9 times 4 is 36. I can do better than that. 12 times 4 is 48. I can do better than that. 13 times 4 is 52. Hey, we're getting somewhere. 14 times 4 would be 56. Looks like I want to go to 50. I, looks like I want to go to the 14th. Uh, looks like I want to go to the 56th power. Okay, the 56th power. Get out of the way now. 56th power. So I can break this off as i to the 56th, or break it apart, I should say, as well. There's that i squared again. So i to the 56th times i squared. 56 is a multiple of 4. Which means that this part just equals 1. i squared again is equal to negative 1. So this one too. It just comes out to negative 1. Who'd have thunk it, right? Who'd have thunk it? So the, the possible answers you can get are sometimes you'll get i. Sometimes you'll get negative 1. Sometimes you'll get negative i. Sometimes you'll get positive 1. In these two cases, we just happen to get negative 1. But those are the four possible answers. When you have i to a big exponent, it must be shrinkable to one of these four things. You're either going to get an i, a negative 1, a negative i, or a 1. Always, 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 always. Okay, so now we kind of get the idea of how this this i thing works. The, they call it the imaginary unit, but it's it just means it's like, well... <laughs> it's a new number called i. You square it, you get negative 1. There we go. Now, we got to talk about something called complex numbers. All of the numbers that I've been playing with up here are one of two types. This one is a real number. Negative 1 is a real number. Positive 1 is a real number. You know what real numbers are. They're the ones that you usually play with. 1, 2, 3, square root of 8, negative 14 fifths. All those numbers, even pi. Those are all real numbers. If you put an i on it, all of a sudden, it's called an imaginary number. That's an imaginary number. That's an imaginary number. Hence the name imaginary unit, I guess. So when you've got i, it's an imaginary number. Well, sometimes what we'll have is we'll have a number that has two parts to it like this. This is called the real part. And 3i is called the imaginary part. Sometimes I like to ask people, how many numbers do you see here? How many numbers is that? That's one number. That is one number. This is a complex number one complex number. It has a real part of 2, it has an imaginary part of 3i, and when you add them together you get what's called a complex number 2 plus 3i. Okay, so real numbers combined with imaginary numbers are called complex numbers. Okay, um, and I, could, I should probably point out right now, standard form means you put the real part and then you put the imaginary part. Real part first, always. Imaginary part second, always. Now it should only have two parts, right? An imaginary part and a, and a real part. Always put the real part first. Always put the imaginary part second. So it's going to be something plus something i. Or it could be minus, I suppose. Something minus something i. But the, the real part goes first. The imaginary part goes second. That's called standard form. Okay. So, okay. 
Now, let's do math with these things, or I should say arithmetic with these things. So what have I got here? How many numbers do you see here? Well, depending how you look at it, this is a complex number. This is a complex number. So what we're doing is we're adding two complex numbers. Now, the good news is when it comes to adding and subtracting complex numbers, it really is just like playing with x's. In other words, you go, you go by like terms. If they're like terms, put them together. If they're not, don't. So the 3 and the 6 are both real numbers. Those are like terms. They combine. The 2i and the 4i are both imaginary numbers. 2i and 4i is 6i. They combine. And that's really all there is to it. Notice it'd be no different if I said 3 plus 2x and I added 6 plus 4x, right? You'd do exactly the same thing. You'd get 9 plus 6x. Well, in this case, we get 9 plus 6i. So it's just like like terms. That's the good news. What do we got here? We got... Uh, well, that's one complex number. That's another complex number. And I guess we're subtracting them this time, which is fine. Uh, but again, it's, it's just like back in the old days playing with x's and stuff. You can take the 3 plus 2i, and then this is like a minus 1 in front that distributes, makes that a minus 6 and a minus 4i. So get rid of your parentheses first. Do that distributing the negative, And then do the like terms thing. Here's a 3. Here's a negative 6. Those are like terms. They're both real numbers. I get a negative 3. Now, I got a plus 2i and a minus 4i. Those are like terms. They're both i terms, I guess. Plus 2i minus 4i would give me a minus 2i. That would be my answer. And notice it's in standard form. The real part first, the imaginary part second. It's in standard form. Cool. So adding and subtracting is, is not, no big deal. Here's a multiplication, in, in a foil, if you will. So you FOIL in the same kind of a way. You go 3 times 6 is 18, and then you go 3 times 4i. That's going to be 12i. Now you're going to go 2i times 6, and you're going to write 12i, I guess. That's a coincidence. Okay, and then you're going to get 2i times 4i, which is 8i squared. Okay, so that's just multiplying it out. Now, these are like terms. Just like we usually get when we FOIL things out. We usually end up combining the two terms in the middle, right? Not always, but usually. So I've got my 18. Those are combining to a 24i. And then here's the part you got to remember. We're not going to leave exponents on our i's. We're OK with an i, but we're not OK with i squared, i cubed, i to the fourth, whatever. i squared, that means cash me in. i squared is negative 1, right? So what this term really is, is 8 times negative 1. It's a minus 8. Okay, so make sure you cash in your i squared. So now I've got uh, an 18 and a minus 8 makes a 10 plus a 24i. And notice I'm keeping it in standard form. I've got the real part first. I've got the imaginary part second. It's in standard form. Cool. So remember this part right here. If you get an i squared, cash it in. It's a negative 1. What are we looking at here? I get a 3 plus 2i with a square on it. Now, hopefully you're remembering that when you have a square on a parentheses or on anything, really, it means make two copies and then multiply them. So I actually, I, I don't square this and square this separately. I don't do that. I have to say the square is on the parentheses. Copy the parentheses, copy the parentheses, make two copies of the parentheses. Now start multiplying. And you say, oh, I guess I'm foiling here. So 3 times 3 is a 9. 3 times 2i is a 6i over there. And then here I go again with another 6i. Cool. And then I've got this 2i times 2i is a 4i squared. Now let's simplify this down. The 9 is a 9. These are like terms. They combine. 6i, 6i makes 12i when you're adding. And then this, don't forget, the i squared is a negative 1. So what you've got here is you've got a 4 and a negative 1 multiplying, giving me a negative 4 like this. And finally, 9 minus 4 is 5 plus 12i. And again, I'm in nice standard form, the real part and then the imaginary part, standard form. Cool. So it's a lot of foiling like we used to do. I got two more examples. I got three more examples. Okay, these are basically similar kinds of things. We got distributing, we got foiling, you know, you're going to cash in your i squareds. These are the main points. Um, but you got to follow your order of operations too. So 
you, you see this I has to distribute, right? But you also see, not yet, I got to handle that square. Remember my please excuse my dear Aunt Sally thing, right? Exponents are a pretty high priority. Parentheses come first, but I cannot combine 3 and I. They're not like terms. So I'm starting with the exponent. So what do I got? 3 plus I times. The exponent says I should multiply the 3 plus I times itself. So that's my first step. Look at the squaring this way. Now here I have what's called a triple product. This multiplies this multiplies this. In order to multiply three things together, you multiply any two of them first and then bring in the leftover. I mean, that's what you do with numbers, right? Three times four times five. You would multiply any two of them, like you could go three times four is 12, and 12 times five comes out to 60. But like I say, you can multiply any two of them. You can multiply four times five is 20, and then times three, you'd get 60, right? So it doesn't matter what order you multiply, but uh, you need to multiply all three of these things together. So my personal preference is to multiply these two things first. Again, you don't have to. You should get the same result in the end either way. But I'm just going to leave that I in front for now, and I'm going to start boiling away here. 3 times 3 is 9. I got a plus 3I. I got another plus 3I. And then I times I is I squared. Cool. Now, before I multiply this I, let me clean up what's in the parentheses here. That's a 9. Now, the 3i plus the 3i makes a 6i. And then remember, this makes a minus 1. So I'm plussing a minus 1 that looks like this. So actually, what I've got inside, 9 minus 1 is 8. I've got 8 plus 6i. Okay, cool. So this is the part where I need to multiply by i, right? So 3 plus i times 8 would be 8i. And then I'd have a 6i squared here. Again, whenever i get shows up squared, you're going to cash it in for a negative 1. So I've got a 3 plus an 8i, and that's becoming a minus 6, right? Because i got plus 6 times minus 1. That's becoming a minus 6. To finish this off, combine the real numbers. 3 take away 6 is a negative 3. And the imaginary part is still there, 8i. So that all boils down to a negative 3 plus 8i. And remember, that's one number. That's one complex number. Negative 3 plus 8i. So that was fun, right? That was fun. I'm going to try to maybe move this underneath so it gets out of the way more or less. Okay, cool. What about this one? Ooh. This one's a famous one. This one causes a lot of grief. Um, so what I would like you to do, actually, is I would like you to try it to see where your grief points are. you got to find your pain points if you're going to fix them, right? Okay. There's actually, like, maybe three things I could say here that are all painful, <laughs> or at least potential pain points. The first thing, let me get a new color going. The first thing is when you look at the 8 here, an exponent of 8, what is the exponent on? The exponent is on i. The exponent is not on negative i. That's the first thing to keep in mind, OK? This is like negative 1 times i to the eighth. It's not, ne it's, it's not negative i to the eighth. If you wrote it this way, then it would be negative i being raised to the eighth power. But that's not what this says. This says negative one times i to the eighth. Okay, this is very important. By the way, if you walk up to somebody in the bar and you bet them a lot of money, they'll tell you that that's negative four, but it, what I just say? They'll tell you that that's positive four and then you win your money because it's actually negative four. And you can verify it by plugging it in on your calculator. You plug a negative two, you hit the X square button like this and it will tell you negative four because the calculator knows the calculator knows when you have the negative on a number and the square like that without parentheses, if there's no parentheses, then this negative is like a negative one in front. I guess I shouldn't have crossed it off, really. But that negative is like a negative 1 in front. You're not squaring. You're not squaring the negative. No, you're not. You're just squaring the 2. This is a 2 squared, but negative. It's not negative 2 squared. 
it's a 2 squared, which is made negative. Okay. Whew. Okay, so spent a lot of energy explaining that one. So let's um let's get that stuff out of the way at least. So I can continue along now, right? Because I can say, hey, I've got a negative. And then what is i to the eighth anyway? Well, remember, I can break this up as i to the fourth times i to the fourth. Every i to the fourth counts as a one. So this is a one. This is a one. I've got a negative times a one times a one. I've got a negative one here. Again, the negative is, is separate. Think of this. Maybe it's better if I write it that way. Think of this as a negative one times an i to the fourth times an i to the fourth. You end up with a negative one times a one times a one. That's a negative one. So what I'm trying to tell you here, what I'm trying to tell you here is that this part is negative one. Okay, that's half the problem. Next, new color. Next, next. Please do not make that into a positive, right? I, I, it's true that if you subtract a negative 5, for example, that's the same as adding 5. Okay, that much is true. But this is not subtracting a negative i because we got an exponent here. And remember, again, exponents have priority. Exponents come first. So we're going to subtract. And now what we got to do is we got to very carefully take the negative i and raise it to the sixth power. So the negative i... I always encourage people, when you've got a negative in there and it's making you nervous, just split it off as a negative 1 times the i. Split it off that way. Okay, It's like a negative 1 times the i. So I've got negative 1 minus. Okay. Now, this is multiplication, so yes, I can put the exponent on each of these separately. And if you take a negative 1 and you raise it to the 6th power, you're going to get a positive 1. And then you're going to get i to the 6th. So I can, I don't need that one, this, I don't need this one anymore. So I'm looking at this now. Hopefully you're, you're, you're with me so far on all these steps. And if you're not, it's a good time to pause, rewind, and say, whoa, what did he just do? Oh, he did that. Okay. So I'm here. I got a negative one, and I'm minusing an i to the sixth. This is the part where, and again, the six is not on the negative, right? This is the part where I have to say, okay, let's, let's, Let's break this down. i to the 6th, well, I can get an i to the 4th once, and that would leave me with an i squared, right? i to the 4th times i to the squared is i to the 6th. You want to t break off as many i to the 4ths as you can, and the reason is because i to the 4th is just 1. Now, i squared, remember, the whole definition of, of this imaginary unit i is that when you square it, you get negative 1. So i squared is negative 1. So what we got here then is i to the sixth is really just a minus one. And if you allow me to scroll up a little bit, yep, yep, yep. See, that's what we said before. i to the sixth is negative one. Now we'll go back down. <laughs> i to the sixth is negative one. Woo -hoo. So negative one minus, and now this part is becoming a minus one. So look what I've got. I've got a minus 1, and a, this is just 0. That whole thing simplifies to just 0 after all that work. Isn't that something? So negative i to the 8th. Let me get this decoration off of there. Negative i to the 8th minus a negative i to the 6th. Yep, that all comes out to 0. Whoa. It's worth it to boil down your exponent sometimes, huh? Which is easier to look at? Is it easier to look at this? Or is it easier to look at zero? I think it's easier to look at zero. So it's a skill you want to have. And I think there was one more, wasn't there? Oh, there it is. Let's try to divide this off so we can see it. Okay, one more. Maybe you'd want to pause and try that one yourself. Uh, be a little careful with this cube here. It's going to kind of be the first thing you have to do, right? Exponents come before multiplication. Okay, pause. Okay, come back. I really hope you didn't add those two together. 5i and 2i would be like terms, but that, that 2i is obligated to do a multiplication first. And again, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Multiplication has priority over any adding and subtracting. So don't add those together yet. The very first thing we have to do 
and I'm going to do it way over here, is we're going to have to take this and to cube it means to make three copies. Something tells me this problem might take a little while. Hmm. I've got a four-way product. This times this times this times this. And I have to work out that four-way product before I even think about the 5i over here. So you can multiply any two together. And so I guess I'll, I usually start at the end. It's just my personal thing. So I'm going to start at the end. So I've got 5i plus 2i multiplies a 2 minus 3i. Okay, now, FOIL time, 2 times 2 is 4. I've got a minus 6i. I've got another minus 6i. Minus 3i times minus 3i is plus 9i squared. So what's this now? This is 5i plus a 2i, which multiplies a 2 minus 3i. And then I'm going to clean up this parentheses. Now, maybe you can see this. This i squared is a negative 1, remember, right? So that means that this term is really 9 times negative 1 is negative 9. That's really a negative 9. So when I take my 4 and I subtract 9, I'm getting a negative 5 for my real part. My imaginary part is combine those two like terms and get a negative 12i. Yeah, this one is shaping up to be a bit of a problem, isn't it? Okay, well, I did that. I multiplied two things together. What I should do now is I should multiply two more things together. I'm going to multiply these two things together now. It's just my preference to work backwards, so to speak. You don't have to. As long as your answer is the same as mine, it means we're happy. So now I'm going to FOIL all over here. 2 times negative 5 is negative 10. 2 times negative 12i is negative 24i. Here i got a plus 15i, and then here I've got a plus 36i squared. Woof, 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 woof. Now, again, what I want to do is I want to, I'm just going to write this like this. I'm going to combine the stuff in this parentheses here. So the i squared here is really a negative 1, which means 36 times negative 1. This is really a negative 36. So when I combine my real parts, negative 10 minus 36, that's giving me a negative 46. Negative 46. Woof -da. Now I combine my two imaginary parts here. A negative 24 plus a 15 is a negative 9i. There. Make sure that looks like a 9. Make sure that looks like a 9. Okay, minus 9i. Well, at least the good news is, you know, if we were factoring out, or excuse me, multiplying out polynomials, with, if these were like x's and stuff, we'd have x cubed terms and x to the fourth terms and x terms and number terms. We'd have a big mess. But every time you multiply complex numbers together, you should end up with a complex number, one that has only two parts, a real part and an imaginary part. So in other words, at least the parentheses aren't getting freakishly long. That's good. Where are we? Okay, now it's the time to do this distributing, eh? I got a 5i. Yep, yep, yep. Now the 2i times the negative 46 will be a negative 92i. So far so good. 2i times negative 9i will be a negative 18i squared. And we are so close now because this i squared, of course, is a negative 1. And the negative 18 times the negative 1 makes a plus 18, right? So I got 5i minus 92i plus 18. Now, you put the real part first, 18. This is called standard form. You put the real part first. So the only real part's the 18, so I grabbed it and I put it there, 18. Now you combine the imaginary parts to put that second. So 5 take away 92 is negative something. How does that look? Boy, I sure hope I did this one right. So 18 minus 87i. Woohoo! And if you find a typo, let me know. I'll give you a bonus point. I, I'm pretty sure I did it right. I'm usually, I'm about 99% on these things. So let's assume that's good. Okay, so I think that's it, right? That's our introduction to complex numbers. So a complex number, what's that? It's a real number combined with an imaginary number. An imaginary number, what's that? It's got an I on it. I, what's that? It's when you square it, you get negative one. And by the way, that makes it real nice and easy to be, you know, uh, simplifying our negative radicals here. Uh, 
even root radicals. You don't need them for odd root. You don't need it for cube roots or anything, but you do need it for square roots or even fourth roots and stuff like that. So reduce your powers of i. Yep, 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 yep. Just always remember to cash in your i squareds. If you have i cubes, you should definitely cash it in. Right? Okay, I think that's good. That's our nice introduction. Now what this is going to do is it's going to set us up to be fearless when we're using the quadratic formula, which is the next lesson.